Players. 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 Players own. Players own. Players own voice. Players own voice. It's Players Own Voice, a podcast from CBC Sports. She is the first Canadian to compete in three different sports in three different Olympic Games. And Georgia Simmerling has also defied the odds with her mental and physical will to recuperate. She has bounced back from more horrifying injuries than most people will incur in several unlucky lifetimes. My name is Anastasia Busas. I was a young speed skater and Georgia was an alpine skier when we first met in 2010. I was still a speed skater when Georgia became a ski cross contender in 2014. And now that she's an Olympic medalist in track cycling, well, I no longer speed skate, but she's managed to keep me around. We're still buds. Georgia, you started alpine skiing, transferred to ski cross. You were alpine skier in 2010, ski cross racer in 2014, and then track cyclist in 2016. Went back to ski cross hoping to qualify for 2018 and had an absolutely horrendous crash. Three weeks before the Games? Yes. Yeah, in the last, uh, the last World Cup before the, before the Games. What happened? What, what, what broke? What tore? Oh God, what didn't? Yikes. Um, I broke both my legs and I uh, completely tore my knee. Um, I, you know, God bless my mom. I love her. Uh, She says, uh, she's like, you know, I tell now people after kind of experiencing what you, what you've gone through, Georgia, when people tell me that they're, you know, they or their daughters or their sons tore their ACL, I I have no sympathy for them. (laughs) I'm like, God bless you, mom. I love you. Carol Simmerling just... (laughs) Bring in the hammer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it was uh, a very, very tough six months of my life. That's for sure. Um, I'm still kind of going through it. Um, I hope I'm on the last kind of tail end of, of um, yeah, I, I hope I can see the light right now, which which I do. I'm starting to um, in terms of my rehab. But, um, yeah, it was it was the worst. Uh, it was some of the worst times in my life, for sure. The, the rehab, the... Um, obviously highs and lows or highs that I was expecting to have rather and the lows of um yeah experiencing watching the Olympics from my coach uh uh as opposed to Sochi I was super prepared uh mentally physically for for Pyeongchang I was you know going in quote-unquote as a medal hopeful um I was having a pretty great season um going into Pyeongchang I was the top ranked girl on my team to be honest, if we were going to go back to that race, which I'm happy to do, uh, I made a bad call at the top of the race in that heat where I fell, actually. I went up, uh, went out of the start gate with battling with uh, a girl from Austria, and we were battling in the air off the first jump out of the start section, and it was a pretty high jump, and we landed and my ski, our skis caught each other and my right knee started to go off to China there. I, I remember getting up out of that, that you know, almost you know, close call. Um, I had one voice in my head saying, I can't put any weight on my left leg and, and <laughs> I'm in a ski race, what, what, do, you, what do you do? Uh, not, not a great convo to have. Um, and then I have an, had another voice in my head saying, Go 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 go. You're you're still in second, actually. There's still two people behind, two people behind you. Um, you're racing on your home your home soil. Um, your family and friends, your sponsors, they're all in attendance. And let, let's get going. So I could manage, and I managed the entire way down. Um, still in second, still pumping rollers. I mean, I went off another three, four big jumps in that race, and then adrenaline kicks in, and uh, yeah, it's a whole different ball game. Sorry, but when you say you couldn't put any weight on your left knee, what had happened? Like, had you already torn? Oh, we think I had torn my leg. Yeah, my, my ACL had, had gone. You tore or... on your ACL at the start of the race and you finished the race. Correct. Well, almost. Almost. Yeah. We... And that, that, that led us up to the, know, the crash. The collision. Look 
It was the last, uh, the last jump of the course, or the second last one, and uh, the speeds were probably the highest um, in that race at that point in the in the course. Um, I think because the speeds were so high, when I tumbled, I tumbled pretty hard and did a couple somersaults, and unfortunately, my left ski never popped off. So. You can imagine my left leg was a piece of al, al dente. Actually, I think overcooked pasta. This isn't your first major injury, though. Just quickly, from head to toes. Oh, God. Tell me what's up. Like what I've done? Yeah, let's start with your tongue. Uh, yeah, I've bit off my tongue uh, 75% twice, actually, resulting in 50 stitches, uh, three layers of stitches the one time and uh they the italian doctors the, the latest time i bit off my tongue chose not to stitch so i had a gaping gash in my tongue <laughs> sent me home good to go just uh gnawing on mashed potatoes there um i have broken my neck i have broken my back in in the same injury uh thankfully that resulted in no surgery so i was in a like full-on body brace for six weeks and i healed miraculously from that um I broke, uh, shattered my wrist, have a couple plates in there, um, and now I have a whole kind of setup uh, down low. I think my um, metal count is uh, in the mid-30s um, for my whole body. Yeah, I, like here I am like complaining about breaking a big toenail when I kick a <laughs> soccer ball incorrectly. Um, did you always know that you were kind of a stud athlete? Um yeah, I, I mean, I, I would. I think I'd be lying to say if I didn't. Uh, I grew up in a very, shall we say, competitive family. I have three older brothers. Uh, my eldest brother played in the CFL for a couple of years. The next brother is an avid surfer, also ski raced. Uh, the next one down the line um, also played CF, uh, sorry, um, Canadian uh, University football, um, also ski raced. I, I'm the youngest. If you want to play with your older brothers, you, you got to keep up, running around the house, playing hockey in the backyard, playing basketball up the road. Uh, we obviously skied as as a family at a very young age, and um, you had to keep up. You had to go down those double black diamonds at age four uh, to have fun, <laughs> and, and I did. I, I absolutely loved it. Even through this rehab, I've been incredibly... This has, I think, given me a whole other side of appreciation for my body. Um, and at the same time, I think the strength of your mind plays a, a huge part of, of one's rehab. Um, with a lot of my rehabs in the past, like my broken neck and back, for example, I healed from that miraculously and in a very, very quick time. And I have had no... no um, uh, damage since then from that injury and I really really attest the power of, of my mind in how I process that and uh, came out of it um, to, to the person that I came out of that injury but to go from alpine to ski cross like I kind of get it right you're still skiing but then to go from ski cross to track cycling all three of those sports are incredibly difficult do you have the same amount of love for each three, or are you just in love with competing? Oh, that's an inter interesting question. Oh, God, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I, I love competing, that's for sure. <laughs> I know. Um, I, do, I do love that. Um, yeah, I think, I think the answer is yes to both. I, I love them individually on, on their own, and I, and I love competing. Um, of course, competing as a, as a national athlete in a national team athlete um, for for two sports that require immense leg strength obviously helped me get on get on the track track cycling team. But uh, many ski racers are are very fit and and have very strong legs and will not be. Yeah. Um, I mean, nor nor do they probably want to be. But uh, I feel like I kind of underplay and and downplay the challenges that. It took uh, to to achieve getting onto that track team because, as you know, there was a very successful team. Um, and for example, you know, transferring extremely powerful legs, but turning them over 125 repetitions an hour on a bike, like, you know, doing 125 RPMs and pushing, uh, you know, 500 Watts. Um, for how long do you have to do that? <laughs> so when you're on the front, uh, but like, I don't think that people, sorry, the, the people that are listening don't really know how hard that is. Like, so for the average Joe that just, you know, enjoys a little bit of a spin to the coffee shop, 
You're supposed to be spinning at 90 RPM. To me, that's even hard. So you're pedaling the bike 125 times a minute at 500 watts. I don't think I have... I've pushed 500 you watts. Have. I have. <laughs> but for how long do you have to do that? So you have to do that for roughly 30 seconds. Okay, um, maybe I could do that. Maybe I'll... Oh! <laughs> it's not that hard. Oh my god, if my teammates are listening. <laughs> they probably are. They're big fans. in your face. No, no, no. <laughs> they know that I'm a natural. So let's just clarify, you uh, out of the start gate from the starting line of a, of a uh, team pursuit. Our starter, Ali Bev, God bless her, she's pushing into the thousands and mm-hmm. higher for sure, 1100, 1100 watts, because she has to start us off. We have to go from zero to 62, 3K in gosh under 25 i was gonna say it's been it's been it's been a day or two since i've been on (laughs) back in the sport so forgive me if my stats are a little off um and i am actually the fourth cyclist up up the track so i actually have to push the least amount of power um to to slip in to to get to let my teammates go in front of me Mm -hmm. and i'm pushing in the 800s roughly seven eight hundred lazy 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 Team pursuit is all about, uh, if you think of a piece of a pie, and our sports physiologist's uh, goal is to exhaust every piece of that pie and, and our energy to the max. Um, and obviously we have different physiologies, each individual, so it's his job to find out where each athlete needs to push at what point in the race. So my job is actually to push very hard and continue the ride for our, for the team at the end of the race. but. Often starters in in a team pursuit will will not finish the ride. It's the third rider's rear wheel to cross the finish line. Say that three times. That actually stops the clock. So you typically push five. I push 500 on the front, and then I'm resting at about 250, 300 watts. Okay. So yeah, I mean that those are very statistical stats that mm-hmm. are that are d- difficult to conceptualize if you've never r- ridden a bike. But essentially, mm-hmm. the race is what. 4,000 meters? Correct. Yeah. So just imagine putting your legs in lava and then just accepting that that's what you needed to do to win an Olympic medal. That's what you do every single time you start. Uh, Yeah, the start actually isn't that hard. But for me, my pain comes at the end, of course, of the race. And we, of course, train. I mean, that's the whole point of training, to be able to push those numbers and go that fast. And uh, sustain that over, of course, three rides in in two days or whatever it is, two or three days um, to the repetition. It's all about the repetition as well. This is a stupid question because obviously I'm a speed skater, but like going around in a circle, what what is actually the fun (laughs) of that? And like I could answer I, that question as a speed skater though, but I would like to hear that from. from I get a... I get to stare at Kirsty Lay's butt. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've done that too. Quite nice, quite nice. It's a good butt. It's a good <laughs> butt. Um, to kind of broaden it, a lot of people have asked me, "What's the, what, what do you like more, ski cross or or uh, team pursuit and track cycling?" And for me, my biggest takeaway and biggest joy is competing as a team and the. Uh, emotions and the um, camaraderie that go into competing as a team, um, nothing beats that. Training with your teammates, supporting them, going through grueling workouts in the you know, years leading up to the Olympic Games, that was an incredible experience and, and one that I really hope to uh, uh, experience again. Um, but I mean, yeah, crossing that finish line with my teammates was uh, one, one, of, one of the best feelings of my life if not the best feeling and that it was because I was on a team you guys all get along really well though what if you didn't get along with that team (laughs) I I often think Mm -hmm. that like obviously Mm -hmm. I've really had zero experience I played you know semi-competitive fastball oh my god no slow pitch no not slow pitch (laughs) it was really it was sure competitive it was really competitive yeah (laughs) I was like on the southwest calgary team selects (laughs) And then I quit because it was just like they were too competitive for okay, me. Okay, okay. But like, what if you didn't like your teammates? I mean, sports, you can say that about business, sports, it's, it's the same thing. It's your job, they're coworkers. Um, I would think that, 
you know, you show up to the office, you have to do your job, you have to get along and um, in, in a professional environment and you don't have to call them your best friend when you leave that track or you leave that office. Um, as I've gotten older, that for, you know, in certain experiences has come up, you know, you're not, you're not going to love every teammate and, and want to text them and Snapchat them after training. Um, you do will you do with some and you don't with others. And it's, it's actually having to get along with, with teammates and they're your colleagues. And I would hope that uh, a team, um, even as uh, intense as and, and unique as a team pursuit team, would would have to kind of find that way and figure it out. We we are lucky. We we loved each other, and and that team in, in Rio was a very very special team for sure. What's the hardest of those sports? Alpine ski cross, track cycling, and don't give me like some like metaphysical oh like, God. you know, just tell it to me like it is. Uh, I mean, well, track cycling like it exerts exerts you. If that's the right word. Um. The for sure the hardest uh, the the pain it, it's a it takes every ounce in your entire body to ride as fast as we ride and uh, my teammates kind of joke because after a training session um, we always have to fill out our like our data for our team and uh, I often say like the training effort was a ten out of ten and and or nine out of ten and um, my teammates just joke at me that I push that hard at training and. Uh, but yeah, every day is pretty pretty much near exhaustion for me, um, and the brink where I cannot walk when I get off my my track bike after a training effort, um, and of course um, a race effort. Um, ski cross and and alpine are beasts on their own. Um, they're incredibly scary, so that's a whole different ball game. Um, you know, hurling yourself down a mountain 125 kilometers an hour down an ice field mm -hmm. for Alpine is, is just entirely different. I had no idea how icy it was. Whew, it's, like a, it, it's, it's an ice rink, literally it's an ice literally rink. An, it's like, just imagine if no one has seen Alpine, if someone hasn't seen Alpine in the flesh it's like they are just skiing down a hockey rink that's mm -hmm. how i see it is and sometimes you show up to a race and the the race race organizers if the weather's coming in or if it's quite soft they will decide to literally take a fire hose out on the entire ski track and hose down the entire thing to um ice it up um and freeze it in in the weeks leading up to the race <laughs> to make it nice and icy Competed in 2010, 2014, 2016, unfortunately 2018, you were sitting on your couch with injuries. Um, that was a devastation. I mean, I, I will attest that every single person on that Olympic team, I think, reached out or posted about it because you're just such a leader on the Canadian Olympic team. What was your most fun games? I have to say Rio because we... Ah, <laughs> just hurt me. Oh, come on. Oh. Um so just based off, you know, the, the, the scheduling, Ski Cross is, uh, is scheduled at the very, very end of the Olympic Games. So you are having to wake up and go to training um, on the mountain while other athletes are coming in from the bar. And the, the pressure is building up and the, the excitement and all of that. And we get, you know, one, one day, one night to have fun, um, which is a blast, of course. Rio, uh, we competed in the very middle of the Olympic Games, and I think we had eight nights after, which I will say was about too too many. <laughs> Sounds like you're a quitter. <laughs> I remember hey, I was not I was not quitting in Rio. <laughs> you texted me. You're like, I don't know what to do, Anastasia. These summer athletes, they just don't know how to party. Whoa! Yeah, you're yeah. throwing me under the bus. I did not say such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> I maybe led my team to some parties. Um, the Winter Olympics, I, I believe for, for the ones that I competed in Sochi, I think there were roughly 2,000 athletes total at the games um, from all countries. Um, in Rio, there was, I think, over 10,000 athletes. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the number is, is vast uh, in comparison. I really wish that we could put in place um, some sort of structure that helped kind of bridge that winter summer team because it is it's like the winter olympic team is like a high school reunion you've met one million athletes along your way who is and i like to of, talk yeah you're a chatty <laughs> kathy and that's why we love you who is the coolest athlete that you've met along oh the way my gosh. and it doesn't have to be famous 
Yikes, the coolest athlete that oh, I've I think met. I'm setting you up. I but... mean, <laughs> Anastasia, you're pretty. You're no, pretty not me. Go. Oh, really? <laughs> darn. Well, I mean, you're up there like for sure. Excluding me. Yeah. You're up there. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, I think I have to go back to the connections that I've made. I mean, and the friendships that I made. Kelsey Sirwa, Britt Phelan, these girls are some of my best friends. And if you look on Kelsey Sirwa's Instagram, you can see how hilarious and ridiculous that girl is <laughs> um, and Brit is in pretty much every second video that she posts and I say I learned pretty much everything I know uh, from track cycling from my teammates from Jasmine Kirsty, Ali Laura the, the, those girls Steph um, Annie those girls taught me and I I really think those girls could have spit me up and chewed me out if they wanted to and they and they didn't so I attest um, those met that medal to, to those girls what keeps you coming back because you've had a phenomenal career and it'd be very easy for you to go, all right, this was a scary injury. Mm. It's been hell to rehab. I've won an Olympic medal. I've gone to three games. I have nothing to prove. Why are you coming back? Because I think I I, I, I was always planning on retiring after Pyeongchang. Obviously not the way uh, you want to retire. Um, and I was, always, I was always planning on getting back on my bike. So in one sense, this path hasn't really changed. Um, of course, it has in, in, in another, but, you know, you can say, what what can I accomplish in two years versus one? Um, I did the sport for less than a year and, and made the team. And I'm just excited to, to honestly turn my body into a little bit of a science project and, and go from being literally very, very broken to hopefully the fittest I've ever been in my entire life. And yeah, of course, that takes a lot of drive and determination and grueling training days, but I'm just not done. And, and I know that fire is still in me and it's and it's burning very very brightly <laughs> where are you happiest competing uh, competing and training training is 98 percent of what we do um so if you don't love that then what are you doing i love training and, and of course i love competing uh you know having your heart pump so incredibly loud on the start line of a team pursuit when the entire stadium is dead silent and you hear that that beep start ticking down from five seconds that feeling, nothing, nothing comes close to it. And of course, crossing the finish line with a big old smile on your face and feeling like you want to hurl is, uh, <laughs> is another, you know, I have to say a great, a great feeling that, um, yeah, I absolutely love. Uh, you've crossed the finish line a few times without mm -hmm. a smile on your face and you've been saying something that the TV has picked up, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know, I'm not a good lip reader. It was uh, words imagine. of excitement. Words yeah, of excitement. I can only imagine. Uh -huh. uh, you know what else you're like phenomenal at? You're, you are so good at like adapting to the culture of a sport. Like whenever we go out for coffee, you're like, oh, there's someone that's a biker right there. Uh -huh. I just said spiker, cyclist, sorry. <laughs> Sounds like, yeah. Like you just like you just love it. Like you just said, you're like this is what I'm doing, and then you just mm -hmm. adapt. And you're like, um, I am going to sponge up mm -hmm. what I need to do to succeed in this sport. That's how I felt, honestly. When I when I joined track cycling, I I felt like a sponge, and I kept my mouth shut for me maybe the first couple months. I uh, <laughs> definitely don't really keep it shut anymore. But I honestly was very quiet. I took in every ounce of information I could because I knew that these girls and this coach knew everything to the sport and I literally knew nothing so I had to retain that information very quickly um I, I didn't have a day to waste my ski teammates are in Chile right now and I look at their I'm looking at their photos on Instagram and I know they're having a blast but not one ounce of me wants to be there mm -hmm. which is it's just it's pretty it's pretty crazy um I, I do feel like I kind of transform and, and become a chameleon into the sport that I'm like living in that in that moment and breathing and and I don't want to be anywhere else would you want to try and become a Canadian women's soccer player no I wouldn't because that would be a very silly thing to do at age 29 <laughs> <laughs> there are many sports that you can't oh, sorry there are not there are not many there are a few sports that you can take up at age 20 you know three four five six seven in in, in your 20s there and and be successful at. There are many sports that you cannot do it. I mean, even late teens to, to switch and become um, at the, you you know, you know get to the elite level. What yeah. about skeleton? I'm just like, maybe. You know, yeah, I, I don't know much about it. You can go I, to honestly, 2020 and then 2022. Me. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think it, I've, I've, I'm trying to tone down the high risk factor. Okay, so you're done after 2020. But if there was a dodgeball team, oh boy, I would be the first one to try out for the dodgeball team. If there was ever a dodgeball team at an Olympic level, I would play dodgeball at the Olympic level. I would crush you. 
You would. No, this is <laughs> so we'd be on the like, same team. But it, you know, we're, we are on the same yeah, team in like many it. respects. <laughs> but it, 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 I, like what what it just dumbfounds me is that you just have this insatiable win to, will to compete, and I loved competing, and I I didn't even really care that much to win. I just hated losing. Mm-hmm. But like now that I'm done sports. I am like the least competitive person you could meet. Like you know, I'm just, I'm like kumbaya baby. Like you don't want to join like a, a co-ed softball team or a co-ed I am soccer on it. team. I am on it. I'm and, on a co-ed softball and team. And you crush and homers the, and you love it. I do. I crush a few dingers, but like when you know the elderly lady comes up to bat and she's just out there for her Tuesday afternoon exercise, I'm like cheering on the other team because I want her to hit it and I want her to get onto well, first hey, base. Hey, don't sound like don't make me sound like I don't have a heart here. Of no, no, you, you cheer do. On. You do. You do. It's just like I just really don't care about the mm-hmm. wins and losses anymore mm-hmm. i'm the first one to be like boys like let's just go for a pint <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's in me i think again it stirs back from when i was super young and and uh the lifestyle that i grew up in you know surrounding myself with and um yeah you know when it's in you it's in you 2010 we were both babies 20 mm-hmm. years old we didn't even hang out we didn't even know each sochi other. of course uh ski cross racer speed skater extraordinaire hung out a little bit lululemon had a great party um and now you're a lifelong bud so it's just been phenomenal to see what you've done winter summer back to summer god almighty i just don't know how you enjoy riding a bike that's just one of those things that i don't think i'll ever enjoy i'm actually trying to sell my bike kijiji baby <laughs> oh my god. look it up I'm not getting too much hits, but <laughs> maybe you want to buy my bike. It'll help you. you. Maybe lower the price. It's called resistance training, okay? <laughs> you probably ride like a $10,000 bike. This bike is going for 600 So uh, maybe that's the secret weapon in your rehab. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was Georgia Simmerling. You just joined us for Player's Own Voice, the podcast. Um, hit us up. Hit us up on Instagram. You know what? I think that I post a few uh, few scandalous pictures. Georgia certainly does. Follow her road to recovery and her road to domination in 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. Players on Voice, the podcast, Anastasia Busis. Peace! Georgia and I recorded that chat a little before her usual wake-up time in Ottawa. Players Own Voice podcast is a CBC Sports production. Email your comments to us, Players Own Voice podcast at cbc.ca. Social media, hashtag Players Own Voice. I'm Anna Stasher on Instagram and Twitter. Our producer is David Giddens. Thanks for listening. Love CBC Podcasts? Help us make them better. Take our CBC Podcasts listener survey now at cbc.ca slash podcasts. The quick survey will help us improve your favorite CBC Podcasts. cbc.ca slash podcasts.